Hi, this is for new people who are learning Salesforce technology. It's hard to know where to start, what order to learn things in, or even how to learn. I'm Terry Cole, Salesforce MVP, and I'm gonna share with you things that have come out of conversations I've had with people who are starting to learn. There are lots of ways to learn Salesforce knowledge initially, and these are just some, and I suggest you use all of them. They will all give you knowledge. Trailhead.com, YouTube topical videos, Be a Multiplier or BAM classes, Salesforce Saturdays are cropping up all over the world, and there are all sorts of Salesforce certification study aids. Use them all. But at some point, you need practical, experiential trial and error learning. And so you're gonna to have to create that for yourself, and this is some advice about that. So the first thing you need to do is get very comfortable viewing records. So most people need to start with list views. Don't start with reports, start with list views. Take any business process described in trailhead.com where someone needs to enter some things and go build the list views that would make that nice. Pretend it's your job and you have lots and lots of them to do every day how would you build some list views to help you do that? When you don't know how to do it, learn more. Stretch list views to their limits. You can put totals at the top of the page. You can put graphs on there. You can actually select from multiple graphs. You can add buttons to run actions on certain selected object items from the list view. You can switch to Kanban view and see more information more readily or change status. So learn all of that. And when you've done that, then move on to reports. Reports make data visible, but it's not actionable. So learn how to translate reports that you're assigned in Trailhead back into a list view that shows you the same records, but makes the data actionable so that you can either click into it to edit or edit in line. So, that's an example of trial and error learning that you're going to have to set up for yourself. Next, you're going to learn, have to learn how to help people edit records well and quickly and efficiently. Quick Actions is your friend here. Go there first. Learn how to tie Quick Actions to buttons, to list views, to lightning page components, in particular the related object component. You can require certain fields in a quick action. You can default certain fields. You can change the order of fields. You can have hidden fields that are being filled in because of the name of the button or the name of the action. So learn how to do all of that. Then start editing lightning pages so that you can present information better. Learn how to use conditional visibility to make rich text, text messages appear and tell your user what they need to do next. Put the related lists on the page when, that, when it makes sense using conditional visibility. Use the related object when there is a related object. Use the path component. Use com compact header component. Learn how all of these can help you edit records effectively. After you edit, you're going to learn, want to know how to normalize the data, that is, make it standard. Users enter data in all sorts of ways. Process Builder is your friend here. When a new record is created or it's edited, you can have Process Builder modify things. As an example, take your state. People enter it fully spelled out, and maybe you should change it to the two-letter abbreviation. Maybe they use mixed case in the two-letter abbreviation, and you want to change it to all uppercase. Maybe they use all uppercase in spelling the name out. Maybe they abbreviate it with a period. All of those things can be changed using Process Builder to the correct state abbreviation. Learn how to do that, um, but recognize that that's not the only thing. You, you, can't, you can do more than just change a field. You can change the parent field. You can send notifications. You can delay actions. Um, you can wait 30 minutes. Um, to change that record so that it's less confusing for your user or perhaps they will change it themselves. Um, you can send notifications at a delayed time specified by a date. Learn how to do all of those things. 
but it can only affect records that have been created new or are modified again. So after you've learned how to use Process Builder in this way, you want to learn Mass Action Scheduler, which is an add-on tool. It's free, and it can allow you to take a list view of records or a report of records and run a Process Builder on every single one of those records on a schedule or manually. Learn how to do this. Now, more on normalizing data. You're going to want to know how to use something called ETL tools, edit, transform, and load tools. Most people form, focus on the L part for load, but it's mostly, in my opinion, valuable to learn the normalization part initially. Most ETL tools cost money to use, but Salesforce and Google provide one for free called the Salesforce Google Sheet Connector. You can add it for free into Google Sheets, and then you can query and load data into the spreadsheet from Salesforce. You can manually modify that data using uh, you know, manual edits or copy and paste, and then you can push it back into Salesforce. Learn how to do this, it's wonderful. Then you're gonna wanna use ETL to learn how to import data, import data in various ways, including single tables, including adding contacts and leads to campaigns, including uh, importing multiple tables, such as uh, contacts and their associated accounts. Now you're gonna to need to learn more automation. We already learned Process Builder, so now we need to learn things that we can't do just with Process Builder, and that's where Flow comes in. You use something called Auto Launch Flow, which is the simplest type of flow or lightning flow, and you can do things like delete a record when something happens, or update all, loop, do a loop and update all the child records when something happens to the parent. You can implement complex logic that depends on other other values uh, in ways that aren't just a simple formula. So learn how to do process builder plus flow. And then apply the same trick with mass action scheduler. Learn how to apply flows to existing records that meet criteria such that they're on a list view or a report. Very powerful. Data aggregation is the process of taking the basic raw data and combining it in ways that make reporting and human being understanding of it better. So we are familiar with, and you need to learn, the roll-up summary field, which allows uh, data from a master detail child object to be roll up to the master object. Um, these are computational roll-ups usually. Um, they have a lot of limits and they can only be applied on the master detail, but learn them and learn them well. Then add a free tool called Dolores, stands for D-L-R-S, Declarative Lookup Roll-Up Summary Tool. This allows you to do a calculation from any child object with a lookup relationship to another object. Very powerful, and it includes the ability to um, support master detail uh, lookups as well, of course, and do text-based um, roll-ups, so concatenating a list of names together or um, some other more complex logic. Explore all that DLRS can do for data aggregation. All right, I've given you ideas, and this is by no means all of the technology. I have learned this motto from my friends in Austin, Texas, Salesforce communities, always be learning. And you're gonna to want to do that. Once you've acquired knowledge, you'll want to acquire wisdom with this trial and error, hands-on experiential learning that you can teach yourself. And then you're ready for all the blogs in the world, which are niche, detailed, narrowly focused expertise being offered to you by the wonderful Salesforce community. My blog is mightyforce.org. Have fun, always be learning.